Yo, what is going on guys, and welcome back to another Lost Ark video. Today I'm doing something a little bit different, I'm jumping on the trend, and I'm doing my first ever account slash roster review. I feel like a lot of creators started doing this a long time ago, but I, you know, with They Mind releasing tomorrow, I figured that if I was ever going to do one, it'd be now, since I think I finally have my account in a decent-ish uh, spot in terms of the goals I set out to accomplish and everything like that, so why don't we just jump right into it. So since I've never done one before, I guess I have to go over everything, and uh, I might as well start off with the least interesting parts, which is, in this case, my Aeromancer. This is probably the class that I have never played, pretty much. I made this character when they released the Express, uh, the Story Express, I think this was before Soul Eater. And uh, I didn't really feel like uh, running through the story again. I have, as you'll see, one of each of the classes in the game. And I got them all to tier 3 before power passes were purchasable, which was way back in the summer of 2022. So I have played through, and back then, the knowledge transfers were limited. So for those of you who don't know, you basically could only use a certain amount of knowledge transfers. And ever after every couple of knowledge transfers, you actually had to complete the continent again in order to power pass it. So, or sorry, to knowledge transfer it. So basically, I would complete like Rohendel on a character. And then the next character that I played, I could just knowledge transfer Rohendel. But for the character after that, I would have to complete it again. So I actually ran out of knowledge transfers at one point And... <laughs> Uh, yeah. I also used to do Solus runs. I don't know if you guys know what that is or remember, but to get Executor Solus cards is a guaranteed drop when you get to the quest where you fight as Delane Armin and you kill the priest dude. So I would literally create a character, play all the way up to that point in the story just with a Solus card, and then I would literally delete the character and then start all over again. And I did that until I got Lost Wind Cliff 12 for the crit rate, and this was way back during when Argos was the endgame content, so I didn't want to do Argos without it. I even used two selectors against my better knowledge uh, to get Lost Wind Cliff, so I mean, this was really back in the newbie days. Anyway, after her, I just have my, RP, my army of Lopang slaves here. These are all characters, again, that I manually leveled, and not only that, uh, as you'll know, as you'll see in a few minutes, I am not a horizontal player at all. So the only reason I have a decently high roster level is because I actually completed tier 1 and tier 2 tower on every single class in the game, obviously except Aeromancer, um, before they were nerfed to 20 floors. So I did 50 floors of tier 1 tower, 50 floors of tier 2 tower on every single one of these characters. I streamed a lot of it. It was kind of fun because people would just join chat and see me doing it and they would call me a lunatic and then they would just leave so it was fun that's what i did with all of these guys and uh yeah it was suffering but i wanted to have a you know okay-ish roster level so that is what i did coming up to the third page this is where we start seeing the neglected or abandoned characters so the summoner is the last character that i just like uh, power passed, or I think it was Artist, as you can see, they both are 1415, and that is with the South Vern power pass. I don't remember which ones they got, but that's where they last stood. My Bard, I actually did get up to this point, and she has it like a 4-3 build on us. Let's, let's take a look what she has. And this is what I meant by, as you can see, I'm not a horizontal player, because both of these values before, I think I only had like 30 Island Souls, and that was because I needed the 20 for the skill point potion. The rest of them that I have are from the uh, the Horizontal Express that literally just came out. So this is my bard. I basically just do Chaos Dungeons with her, but she does have a 4-3 engraving loadout here. Just super basic. I don't know why I built this, to be completely honest with you. I don't think I've ever done a single raid with her. Uh outside of, like, Descaluda. But, in terms of uh, cards, I actually do have all of the support card sets. So I have, you have a plan here. Put this on, why not? 
I also have a master, uh, Lost One Cliff 30, which, you know, I just gave you a little bit of backstory about how I got some of these cards. Not all of them, but this was way back in the day. And I also have Master of Spears, so, you know, whenever I do decide to play a support, I'm fully, you know, I'm geared out. I'm ready to go, dude. Deadeye, Striker, and Arcana are the three characters that I did play for a very long time, and then I ended up dropping. So, Mr. Ram Ranch got all the way to Brel, uh, and so did uh, Striker. This was OG Brel, though. And then I really did not want to keep playing them, and I leveled up my Arcana. My Arcana is the most unlucky character in my entire roster. I think only second to... Or the only character that comes even close to this level of unlucky is probably my Glavier. This chick pitied. And I'm not even exaggerating, I'm not being hyperbolic. She pitied every single armor piece and weapon all the way from 1370, okay, from 1370 all the way to 1540. Every single one. She is by far, like, the most unlucky character I have ever played. Like, it's actually insane how bad she is. Like, seriously, I, I cannot tell you how horrendous her luck has been. Her quality, as you can see, is also completely horrendous. And honestly, I, you know, got a 91 quality weapon, that's about it. These greens, I have dumped like thousands and thousands of gold into, and they just never improved, and I just eventually dropped her anyway, so I did not want to keep, uh, you know, dumping stuff into this. You know, she has decent stats for her eye level, I feel. Uh, I'm still, re I was still running the barricade build instead of the, uh, Raid Captain build, because I feel like for the Raid Captain Crystal build, it would have just been way better to run it with Empress 1, but, you know, when I got her to 1540 and she had been so unlucky, I really did not feel like redoing her accessories, to be completely honest, so this is where she lies. I really like Arcana, honestly, like her animations and everything uh, are some of the coolest in the game, and I do like the way that she plays. But she was just so unlucky, and also there are just other classes that I enjoy playing more. And that's honestly the real reason that I left her behind. She is a character that you kind of have to treat as a main. I don't think she makes for a very good alt. You have to, you know, get high level cooldown gems especially uh, to really make her shine. And you need a lot of, like, muscle memory to, you know, deal with all the cards and stuff like that. And I really enjoyed it. I enjoy the difficulty of the class. At least Empress. I never tried Emperor. Well, I never tried Emperor, like, in a serious setting. I do have an Emperor Chaos Dungeon build, but you guys know what I'm talking about. So, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if I'll ever revisit Arcana in the future with, like, some sort of express event. I would be open to it because, like I said, she is just really flashy and she's also a very strong class. If you do d invest in her, you do get a lot of returns, so... Never say never, but, uh, yeah, that's kind of where the road lies for her. Moving on to the second page of Rejects, starting with my Reaper. Reaper is one of my insane horror stories. I built her as soon as she came out. I was super excited for Reaper. I actually was so hyped up that I wasted a billion gold. Like, I... One of the biggest regrets I have in this game is buying Lunar Reaper books, the engraving, for 17k each. Yes, I did that week one. Yes, I am dumb. Yes. That being said, I still love Reaper. She still has, like, level 5 event gems. I did not level her up. because She used to have higher gems, but I took them away to give to other characters since she had event gems. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, I really like her, but I just liked other classes more at the time, or I was being very cheap, because as you can see, my other classes here are Shadowhunter and Scouter, and at the time, I played these for basically like six or seven months straight, they're two gym classes, they're super brain dead to play, I just had level 10s on them, and they were able to carry through pretty much any content, um, that, you know, at the time, obviously, but when it came to pushing for a con, I really did not feel like I should have done it on them. They are good workhorses, but they are just not, like, 
unfortunately they just don't scale very well. So I didn't really feel the need to, I didn't really like to, I didn't want to push them further. I felt like if I invested in another character, um, I like to be a little sweaty and unfortunately no matter how sweaty you are on these two, you can just get class diffed like basically every single time no matter how hard you try. So it was a really shitty feeling. My Paladin, I got peer pressured into leveling. Honestly, I really enjoy playing Paladin. He's really fun. He's super brain dead. And uh, he's just alpha as fuck. So I just really like Paladin. And I am probably going to level him up to 1580 and beyond in the near future. But I just have other pressing investments at the moment. And then we have these two hoes. They literally almost look identical. These are the two characters that I am debating putting up with a the next event whenever the hell that comes out. Deathblade was one of my mains. Uh, I stopped having fun with her at one point, and then they announced the rework, but by the time they announced the rework, I had already sold her. She had a level 10 surge gem. I had sold her gem, and I had already invested in another class, so I pretty much just shot myself in the foot, basically, because I should have used my event or express event on her instead of my Zerker. But uh, she'll just get the next juiced event. I'm, I'm debating pushing her to 1580 and then just using the next express event on War Dancer or Reaper. Uh, more than likely War Dancer, though. So those are, my, those are my current plans. So now moving on to the thing that most people care about. Um, these are my top six characters at the moment. As you can see, very meta-friendly here. Just no shame about it, to be honest. These three are my favorite classes in the game. They are super fun, they're super strong. I mean, Breaker is just cum, Slayer is just cum, Soul Eater is cum, bro. What? And the reason why Zerker is here is because I mained Slayer for pretty much the longest time. I recently swapped to Soul Eater, but I was enjoying Predator Slayer so much, I was like, fuck it, man, I'll just get another, I'll just get male Predator Slayer. Unfortunately, Zerker does not play like Predator at all, and he's a lot weaker than Slayer, so that was unfortunate, but I still like him. Like I said, he's he's just alpha as fuck, dude, and he's a workhorse. He's got amazing utility. He's got decent damage. He's got great stagger. He's got good destruction. He's tanky. He's mobile. He's got everything. He's like a Swiss army knife. He doesn't excel at anything, but he also doesn't really lack anything either. Um, he has good burst as well, so, yeah, he's like the jack-of-all-trades master of none, I think that's perfectly fine to have. I'm kind of hoping and praying that they do buff him or juice him in some way, shape, or form in the future, because I feel like, I don't know, he's just so middle of the pack, uh, just been power crept a whole lot. Same thing with Glavier. I feel like glavier has been power crept quite a bit, even though she's, she's still good. However, I cannot say the same for Gunslinger. If you ask me how I genuinely felt about my Gunslinger, I would describe a scenario to you. I would tell you that I want to come home from work, right? Open the door to my house, and I see my Gunslinger sitting down on the couch reading a magazine or something. And I walk up to her and she's like, oh, welcome home, babe. And I'm like, hey, sweetheart, I got you something. And she's like, she starts smiling, and I'm, she's like, really? I'm like, yeah, come here. And I grab her hand, and I start guiding her outside, waking our way to the backyard. I tell her, okay, cover your eyes. She covers her eyes. We walk outside. She feels the heat of the sun on her skin. And then I tell her, okay, get on your knees. Like, what? Get on my knees? I'm like, trust me, just get on your knees. And she... She's a little nervous, but she does it anyway. She's kind of excited as well. She wants to know what's going to happen. And then I stand in front of her, and I tell her, Okay, open your eyes. And she removes her hand from her eyes. She looks up at me, and she sees a barrel. And then I blow her fucking brains out. Honestly, that's how I feel about this character. I, she is, She was my main for like one and a half years. She is by far the class I have played the most, because in my entire time playing Lost Ark, she has never left my top six. She was my original main, I played through 
the campaign with her, everything with her. I progged every single raid that came out all the way up to Brel. She was the one that I would prog with. Clown, Vulton, Vicus, all this shit. I hung out in a Gunslinger main discord. The whole nine yards. She's always been around. She's... I love cowboy classes. That's why I play Deadeye as well. And I mean, I've stuck with her this far, but honestly, she is so fucking weak, and she's... She just has nothing. Horrible stagger, super long animations. Like, you, you can literally raise a child by the time that, you know, Sharpshooter finishes its animation. Sniper rifle crit rate is fucking horrendous. She, you know... It's just, why? Why does she have so many flaws? You know? So I really hope that Smilegate does rework her in some way, shape, or form in the future. But I got her to 1610 because she was very lucky with Hones, because I was not originally planning to push her from beyond 1600. But she got very lucky, so I have my sixth Thamine character. She doesn't have level 9 gems, unfortunately. I'm gonna work on that very soon, because... You know, Lamau not having level 9 gems at 1610 is incredibly smudge, but I've been reluctant to do it. But just a general tip, guys, if you ever are thinking about what you should do for your character, if you're unsure, or if it's like, should I invest in an alt with gems? Always invest in gems. The gems are never a wrong choice. In the worst case scenario, you can always just resell a gem and get your gold back, if not a little bit more, right, if you play it smart. But... Best case scenario, if you get rid of the class, or you don't play it anymore, you can just re-roll the gem to another character. So, you know, investing into gems is probably the best thing that you can do, to be completely honest. Anyway, enough yapping about Gunslinger. I, I don't enjoy playing her that much. I, it, It's gotten so bad that, like, I play poorly with her, and I genuinely think it's like a mental block. Because when you're excited about a character and you're tryharding, you have a fun time. I feel like you definitely play better. If you enjoy what you're playing, you will play better, okay? That is just law. That's just how it works. That's just how it is, right? But when you don't enjoy what you're playing, if you're playing it begrudgingly, you're more than likely going to play poorly. And I feel like that's what's really gotten into my head. So, I'm praying and hoping for some sort of rework or meaningful changes for Gunslinger in the future. I'm not playing that gay-ass Time to Hunt shit. I'm never doing that. Fuck that. Um, so, if they don't rework Peacemaker or whatever, she is just going to be abandoned and replaced by my Deathblade, to be honest. Glavier, second most unlucky character. I basically forced this bitch to be where she is. And yes, I know that the point eighty three is kind of triggering, but that's because she has a white glow weapon. Same thing for my Zerker, he's slowly pushing up to 1620, whenever I get him up to 1620. I'm gonna buy his gems. Breaker is my newest addition, I guess I can load into my Breaker to show you guys his gear. So for Breaker, I actually got him to 1600 on week 1, and I got him to 1620 on week 3, which is the soonest you could have gotten him. Within reason, okay, with getting once you get full Akan gear on 3 weeks of the new event. So since I got him to 1620 so fast, I did decide to buy his accessories. Uh, so he's currently 5'3 plus 1. I have 35 set, unfortunately not the best uh, stats here, but you know, it's just temporary. I need to roll master anyway, uh, but I wanted to give him some sort of set bonus. And he currently has two level 10s, one for Eye of the Storm and one for the Asura Finisher. Those are the two more important ones, and this is basically like 65 to 70% of your damage. So I'm planning to get him full 10s as soon as I possibly can, but as you guys can imagine, it is super expensive. So my current goals is this. I'm focusing on getting him gems and also getting his 40 set. So once I get those two things... I will start focusing more on my Berserker and my Glavier and Gunslinger. But, um, yeah, this might take me a few months to complete. So, yeah, I was hoping for a, a, a 9-7 stone, but unfortunately, out of, like, 80 stones, I did not roll one. And um, I don't, you know, I don't plan on buying them. I had saved up, like, 80-plus stones with Adrenaline Brawler, Adrenaline Grudge, Adrenaline Keen Blunt, you know, all this other shit. Unfortunately, none of it went through. I even tried rolling Adrenaline, like, Supercharge and Ad Adrenaline uh, Hitmaster for the Brawl King build, which is the first build that I started playing with. I also plan on building Brawl King, since once I get him full 10s, I can just reutilize all of the event gems for Brawl King, 
and those actually you don't even need to upgrade these beyond what they are you really don't so all i would need is just a damage gem for his identity and that's literally it i you can you don't have to use any other higher level gem than that and honestly you don't have to for asura either but i do want to have just full 10 since he is one of my main uh characters also peep the title now moving on to my uh slayer and this is the character that i was playing uh as my main for like what seven months straight basically up until last month because last month i made the push uh from my soul leader to be from 1620 to 1630 so since i decided on that the reason i decided to push my soul leader instead of my slayer was because I was playing Predator Slayer. And honestly, guys, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like people might be saying I'm coping when I say this, but I feel like Predator Slayer doesn't scale as well into the end game. Like, if I do Predator in, like, Frog or Brel, like, or, you know, even a Khan, it is honestly an about to upright angle every single time. It is, it feels really bad, to be completely honest. And, and, you know, obviously the classes that would out damage you would be like Soul Eaters, War Dancers, uh, Death Blades, stuff like that, which are very, very strong classes, right? But the thing is, like, I would have a really high back attack rate, really high crit rate, you know, all this shit. I would have full 10s, and then I would just about to fight her. And it felt horrendous. And I have, you know, 40 set as well. So... When I made the swap to Punisher, and, and keep in mind, I, I had full 10s, but I re-rolled my uh, Final Blow gems and Fatal Sword gems uh, to Punisher. So I run Punisher now, and Punisher feels fucking amazing. Like, every sing it does so much damage. It does a ludicrous amount of damage. Now, my spec might look like a little smoji, but that's because my bracelet rolled Wedge Hammer. It actually rolled the God combo, and it has 103 spec. So, honestly, I'm going to take it, bro. Like, seriously, I'm not going to, you know, you know, I'm not going to attempt God. This is a really, really good bracelet. I had other ones that had high stats as well. Uh, where is it? So this one has 119 spec, and it has ambush. So if I put this on, it's 1830. But, and I also had this one. This one has 120, and it has precise, which is amazing, because I would have 1832, and then I would also have uh, 174 crit, which is 6% plus how much from precise? 4. So basically 10% crit rate. This is basically like a baby adrenaline 2, which I do not have. But Steel Wedge and Hammer is just too fucking good to pass up. So I'm taking the L on this spec. It's not even that big of a difference anyway. It's 1813. You see there you get 28.5 skill damage. And then you also get 311 bloodlust damage. And then 120, 1832. It's 28.8 and 314. So I lose 3% on my bloodlust damage, about 1% on my awakening damage, and like what? Fucking 0.3% of my skill damage and my burst. But in return, I get like, how much is this? Like 16% crit damage. It's crazy. So it's definitely worth to roll this. The only problem that I have with my Slayer currently is that because I was running Predator, the elixirs that I rolled were critical. And for Punisher, you do prefer Master. So, especially because I went with Keen Blunt instead of Cursed Doll. So, I'm much more reliant on getting crits, right? When I don't crit as often, this feels horrible. But it still, still easily outperforms my predator. I did a bunch of parses in Trixie in the other day just out of curiosity. And at a 60% crit rate, I was parsing like 24 million and my predator was parsing like 23 million at like 90% crit rate. So that's really smoke. Like imagine having 30% crit rate less and parsing, you know, more than the other build. Now, granted, 
uh, and that was with both builds. So I do have one cycle, and I also have a skill tree uh, for one and a half cycle. I basically use one and a half cycle exclusively for Akan Gate 1 and Ivory Tower Gate 2. I don't know if that'll change in the future, but I feel like one cycle is really, really strong. Honestly, like if I don't need a Purify Rune... I think one cycle is honestly there's there's pros and cons to both, which is why I have them. So I can easily swap them if I need to. So with this you can run bleed on Wild Stomp, which is great. I mean it's three percent more damage overall. You can also run purify on this or quick recharge. So it's really flexible. Anyway, I honestly am telling you guys Slayer especially Punisher now, I'm having so much fun with it. I really regret pushing my Soul Eater before I tried Punisher because I definitely would have just pushed my Slayer first. But as it stands right now, it's so expensive to push the 1630. I mean, I've exhausted fucking everything. Everything and then some by a mile, okay? Like hardcore swiping to try to get to 1630. So I am not doing that again anytime soon. Honestly, if anything, I'm parking my Slayer here, and all I'm going to do is hone her weapon. So I have a plus 20 weapon instead of a plus 19, so I got the blue glow. But I'm probably just going to push for plus 25 on my Slayer and my Breaker, and just keep them at 1620 for the, t for the, f the very, very foreseeable future. I don't really plan on pushing either of them to 1630. I also don't plan on pushing my Soul Eater beyond 1630. I do want to get her a plus 25 as well, but as you guys can imagine, that's extremely, extremely expensive. I don't have any plus 25s on my account. Uh, I do have, you know, a decent amount of gems, which I feel like is a much better investment. But, you know, I do like the sense of committing to a character, um, and, you know, everybody wants that glow. So, those are my plans for my Slayer, really. I'm going to slowly re-roll my elixirs. I'm not going to rush it. Uh, if I get Master, then I can just make another, you know, setup with Master. Um, most of these pieces, like this chest piece, could definitely use some replacing. Uh, and I also need to replace my legs with crit damage as well. So, those are my priorities for now. Just getting crit damage on the legs and then trying to get, um, you know, Master on uh, the set bonuses. And definitely last but not least is my Soul Eater, guys. So this is the character that I've currently pushed to 1630. Um, it's plus 83 because I did get the weapon to plus 22. Like I said, I'm going to try to go for a uh, plus 25 on her uh, a little bit slowly. But that is it. I, have, I actually have both Knight's Edge builds. So I have uh, a 5-3 plus 1 with Knight's Edge. And then I also have a 5-3 plus 1 full moon. Now, my full moon bracelet is unfortunately not that amazing. It has exposed weakness, but it does have decent stats. You know, it is what it is. Um, Sawtooth Blade Lamau, you know. If it, ever, if it ever works on Guillotine Swing, then yeah, very, very, very crazy, very XD screenshot. But uh, ideally, I do want to replace this bracelet at some point in the future. I just haven't really found any other bracelets that have high stats with something else that I would want. Ideally, I would probably want MP recovery, which is what I used to have on my bracelet. I can definitely tell the difference not having MP uh, recovery on it. I want MP recovery and circulate or like MP recovery and, you know, hammer or any of the crazy combos that everybody wants, right? But I would really, really love just something with a little bit more crit rate or MP that's stronger than this. So it's whatever. I don't recommend buying bracelets unless you have zero, but, uh, you know, from last I checked, uh, going from, like, 18, 17 spec to, like, 18, 35 is about 1% more damage, so it's really not that big of a deal, to be completely honest with you. I do have full 10s, of course, for Knight's Edge. Unfortunately, Knight's Edge has more damage gems, so I actually even considered main swapping to Full Moon because Full Moon has only three damage gems. So I can recycle most of these. I can recycle seven of these gems, but I am using an event cooldown for Soul Drain, Death Order, Astaros, and Gluttony. Um, so that's 
so yeah i don't know i might just re-roll to full moon at some point and then i can recycle and reutilize the uh the two knight's edge uh damage gems that are not required for a full moon but I really enjoy playing both of them, to be honest. I don't want to get rid of either build. I think Knight's Edge is definitely the GOAT for Volvis. I think Full Moon is way better on homework content, obviously. So stuff like Brel and Akan, I play Full Moon. And stuff like Kyangel and Volvis and Frog, I prefer, much, much prefer playing Knight's Edge. I've tried both in every one of those situations. And that's what I feel comfortable with. I feel like uh, Knight's Edge <clears throat> can also do well in a con. I have done well with it. But Full Moon has definitely a huge advantage, especially in Gate 1 and Gate 3. There's just really no competition. Uh, Knight's Edge just can't keep up because those the burst windows are incredibly generous. And it has a lot of really, really good atropine windows. So, yeah. I recently finally got her 40 set as well. Oh, wait, what? Huh? Something's missing. Is it this? Yeah, boom. Okay. Wait, have I been actually playing without my fucking 40 set this entire week? So anyway, like I said, I recently got her 40 set. I am running Master. I do think Master is the better set for her unless you're running Adrenaline 3. If you're running Adrenaline 3, then you're probably better off with uh, Critical. But in general, I feel like Master uh, and Adrenaline 1 has the higher ceiling. Uh, Adrenaline 1 and Critical has a higher ceiling, obviously, but that would require you to play with a crit synergy permanently, which, you know, I, I can't do. So this is fine. My elixirs are dog shit, though. Like, as you can see here, Master 5, Blessing of Life 3. I don't even have boss damage on my shoulders. My chest piece is fucking MP4. And my legs have Blessing of Life. So these elixirs are absolute dog shit dog water. So I am actively trying to replace them. I'm not buying bottles or anything like that. But I am just, you know, passively trying to replace these with better elixirs. Because, yes, I get the set bonus. But goddamn, like, I at least need plus damage, man, on the, the shoulder. So that's where she's at. Have both builds 5 3, have full 10s for Knight's Edge, and I have 40 set master on her. Her bracelet is circulate. I have 110 crit, 81 swift. As the swiftness is whatever, as long as you have 10% move speed, that's literally all that matters because this combined with uh, Lunatic Edge and um, Yearning will get you to uh, 40%. Uh, you don't even need this much. You can even have like 8%. So your your swiftness can really be complete dog shit and you'll still be at, at max raid captain effectiveness with uh, level 3 yearning. So I really like Soul Eater, but I feel like she's a pretty broken class, so it's less satisfying to MVP on her compared to Slayer. I'm not slaying Slayer is balanced or anything like that, but at least Slayer is like a back attacker. So you can at least pat yourself on the back if you play her well, at least punish her, or honestly both. So if you have a really high back attack rate and everything like that, I feel like it's still good. It's still something that you can be proud of, but like... You know, Soul Eater is such a privileged fucking class. It's it's insane. I mean, you have two built-in push immunities. Um, you also have one of the biggest attack speeds, like or sorry, move speed steroids, allowing you to go full spec, have zero swiftness, and still make full raid captain effectiveness. That's insane. You know what I mean? So, also, she's Hitmaster. So, yeah, she's one of the most broken classes in the game for sure. Uh, and also a, a two charges of a Dark Axle. Like, dude, what is this class, to be honest? So yeah, I, I it's not as satisfying to do really well on her, just because she's so busted. But um, I still feel like she is really fun to play, and she's very cool aesthetically. And especially if you play Knight's Edge, it's very satisfying to constantly keep your rotation up. I think that's like the, the key point, is being able to keep up your rotation is really satisfying. Well, there you have it, guys. I guess some people care about collectibles. These are my collectibles so far. I have... How many is this? Like, 13 Ignea tokens, I guess. Um, please don't laugh at my other stuff, though. I have... I, 
I'm going to be honest, I had like 31 Island Souls before the Horizontal Express. So this 54 is a lie. It's about 31. All Giant's Hearts, Omniums, I have not farmed them, to be honest. I always forget about the fucking bosses. Masterpieces, I have a okay-ish amount. What do I even get? Fucking nothing, dude. Wow. Th this used to be 20k gold. I guess they removed it because of bots. I haven't even done the music box of memories yet, um, or anything like this, so... But yeah, these are my... these are my collectibles. I think my game just crashed. It's... it's frozen, guys. Alright, well, that's the video. Yep, there we go. Rip. GG's. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I will see how the hell I cut this video down. Also, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever about any of my characters, or any of the classes in the game you want to raid or anything like that, then be sure to hit me up on Discord. The link to the Discord server is in the description of every single one of my videos. So I hope to see you guys there and have a good one.